Let's take a look at some more clips of how the Frankie family treated their children. And let's start off with how they spoke about Russell. Remember, just the other day, Ruby Frankie said some horrible things about Russell during a custody hearing. Well, this is how they spoke about him on camera. Russell is incredibly mature for his age. His ability to empathize with other people and to connect with them at the age of 10 is incredible. Like, he truly thinks about other people and doesn't think about himself. And he's been that way ever since he was a little kid. Yeah, he's it's just really born amazing. that way. So that was Kevin Frankie stressing how mature Russell is and how empathetic he is. And now here's what Ruby has to say. I love Russell's sincerity. I don't think Russell knows how to tell a lie if he tried. He's so honest. I love his willingness to share. He's very generous. I like that he's like unapologetically himself. I love that when I was his age and that was not him. <laughs> <laughs> I was not empathic at all, but there's just a lot of empathy. I like how he forgives me no matter what I do. Oh, he is very forgiving as well. This next clip is Rudy Frankie trying to explain why Eve didn't get to go on their family skiing trip. So the reason why Eve did not go skiing with us was because she left her ski coat at school. And over the Christmas break before New Year's, they took everything from the lost and found and took it to donate. And Eve said, well, that's okay. Just, I just, just buy me a new one. Just buy me a new ski coat. I said, that is a very entitled attitude. And that is not how we work around here. If you lost your ski coat, you lost your privilege to go ski. Entitled. She was six years old, mistakenly forgot her ski coat at school over the winter holidays, and they would not replace her jacket. So she missed out on a family ski trip. In this next clip, this is Ruby Frankie getting upset because her kids are excited for Christmas and they wanted to start drawing names on who they were going to buy presents for for Christmas. She got upset that they were already excited, called it selfish, and this is what they did instead. Yeah, so this morning the conversation went that the kids really wanted to draw names for Christmas. I insist it's too early and I don't want to be breeding thoughts of, I don't know, selfishness. So, we had a thought, an idea. Okay, so we like the name, the idea of drawing names, but instead of drawing names for Christmas gifts, for the next four weeks, every Monday night, our kids are going to draw a name of a sibling, and they're going to do an act of service for that sibling sometime during the week. Mm, is it just me, or did you find Kevin a little too happy about drawing names for acts of service? It almost looks like he realized how miserable the kids were, and he was taking joy in it. And for Ruby Frankie to call it selfish that they wanted to draw names to see who they were going to buy for is ridiculous. This next clip talks about sleepovers. So in a couple of episodes on Eight Passengers, Ruby, Frankie, and her children talk about the fact that they're not allowed to have sleepovers. She tries to explain why in one of the Connections podcasts. What? You're saying no sleepovers now and sleepovers are distorted? What in the world? Yes, yes, sleepovers are distorted. Here's why. I am the mother and I am responsible to know what is going on with my child. And when I send my child to sleep over at someone's home, that is really vulnerable. My child for most of the time at that home is going to be unconscious. They're going to be sleeping. They're not going to be awake and alert. And that naturally makes them more vulnerable. And I don't know what's going on in that home. I, I don't have any ability to know the reality inside that person's home. And so by me allowing my child to go over and spend the night at that home, now I am neglecting my responsibility. I have just handed it over to someone. I think we can probably all agree that sleepovers at other people's homes would have been much more safe than having sleepovers in their own homes. This next clip is Rudy Frankie, and she is trying to explain how the way she loves her children actually makes her look like a monster, but it's really a good thing. This is what love sounds like. When you see someone hurting, you acknowledge the hurt. If your kid came to you on fire, would you say, I'm so glad you trusted me to tell me you're on fire. But if I put out the fire, that's going to really hurt and you're going to end up with scabs anyway. So I'm just going to love you where you are right now. No, you, 
you throw them on the ground and you start rolling them. You get a blanket and you start hitting the flames. And they're going to say, you're hurting me. You're, you're beating me. You're controlling. It's like, no, dear, hold still. I'm getting the fire out. That's what a loving parent does because nobody will do it. It looks to the world crazy. And because they've never been loved before, it looks like I'm angry to them. It looks like I'm controlling. It looks like I'm militant. It looks like I'm a monster. It looks like I'm mean. It looks like I'm full of hate. It looks like I'm not accepting it because they don't know what love looks like or sounds like. And this last clip that I'm going to leave you with is Ruby Frankie when she announced that she was leaving the eight passengers recordings more for the connection side of it and deciding that she's going to do some parent coaching. I thought it would be a good idea to give you a little bit of an update, a life update, um, and let you know what's going on. So I have been spending more time with connections and being a mental health educator, and I am teaching a parenting class in September.